Hello, my name is uh, Bogdan Nahailu. I'm the chief editor of Kiev Post, and I'm delighted today to tell you that we have an opportunity to speak to uh, Alexei Chernyshov, the CEO of Naftogaz, a very important player on the domestic scene and also on, on the international scene. Please tell us a little bit about Naftogaz, the scale of its operations. Is it just about gas, as the title suggests? Yeah, thank you very much. It, it is my big pleasure and honor to be interviewed by Kiev Post, uh, which uh, has been treated like the most respectful media in Ukraine, having an international audience and spreading the facts about Ukraine and checked facts is so important given the course of the war. Coming back to your question, Bogdan, so first of all, we, would, we have to admit uh, that Naftagas Group is obviously the biggest and the largest Ukrainian state-owned enterprise. I can even guess it is the biggest in general in Ukraine. So Naftagas Group actually deploys uh, several business areas in gas production, in oil production, so we call it upstream operations, as well as gas and oil transportation, refinery, processing, storage, actually everything you can imagine in oil and gas. We do also uh, operate in the areas of uh, combined heating plants and uh, CHPs as we call them. Uh, we also do some projects and own assets in alternative energy, uh, already in solar and starting in wind generation. And on top of it, we have uh, just integrated uh, uh, the biggest DSO, distribution system operator for natural gas in Ukraine. So obviously, gas uh, is, a, is a monopoly. Uh, it is not a sin to be a monopoly. You just have to follow the regulation and legislation. And I'm happy to have you here. Thank you very much. Well, obviously, uh, from that we learn that NAFTA gas is what keeps the country running and warm during the winter. But uh, many of our listeners will recall the days when uh, Ukraine was dependent on energy from Russia. Could you explain to what extent is that period over behind us? To what extent has Ukraine freed itself from this stranglehold uh, that Russia had uh, upon it and upon Europe, in effect? Yeah, thank you for pointing exactly to that question. I think uh, right now we have a historical event, uh, first time in Ukrainian independent history over the last 30 years, more than 30 years, we have managed to actually count on ourselves. So we are self-sufficient in gas production. So we have managed to go through this winter using solely Ukrainian domestic gas. If we go back to the history a little bit, uh, I have to inform that uh, Ukraine in 1970s, 1960s have been the biggest gas producer in the Soviet Union and actually provided natural gas to other so Soviet republics, including Russia. And uh, we have produced uh, more than 70 billion cubic meters per year. Uh, this number has never been achieved again. And uh, obviously, Russian Federation has always explained to Ukraine that you have a cheaper gas from Russia, and uh, actually, it was always a hook, political hook. We say it that cheap gas comes at a price, and uh, the price of your independence, of your freedom, and we have experienced it in full, I think. And the other countries are actually doing the same. So, Alexei, could you give us an idea of uh, the health of the reserves that uh, you have? Uh, in terms of gas quantities in underground storage facilities and also perhaps is there potential to uh, renew or rediscover uh, gas reserves in Ukraine or offshore? Yes, absolutely. If you allow me, I start with the second part of your question. Actually, Ukraine is ranked second and the third in Europe by reserves and resources of natural gas. This means we are a very rich country in that regard. We have a great deposit of natural gas, mainly in DDB, Dnipro uh, Donetsk Basin, actually located between two rivers, Dnipro and Donetsk, Poltava and Kharkiv region. 
and uh, we have hell of a lot of gas in this country. Is that why this region is such a target uh, for the Russians right now, why they want to occupy it and hold on to it? Also, also they have many reasons for doing that, uh, and, uh, but this is one of the reasons that will make us suffering more in terms of energy uh, limitations. Uh, so that is why it's so important to keep the front line far from the production areas. But coming back to your question, uh, being second and the third in Europe by resources and reserves after Norway and the United Kingdom, uh, it, it is clearly and obviously that we should uh, increase uh, gas production in this country that we have decided to do. We have managed to do, to, to do it uh, in 2023 by additionally plus 7-8%. We plan to do it in 2024 as well. Obviously, everyone might say that the overall consumption of gas in this country has been lower uh, due to the less population, due to the uh, many people who left the country during the times of the war, and the industry is not so big if we compare to the pre-war level. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I think uh, both streams are important. First, we have increased the production and we have finally managed to, to be self-sufficient. I think, I think it's a cr critical point for this country. Well, tell us a little bit about the impact of the Russian strikes on energy infrastructure. How has that affected the work of NAFTA gas? And perhaps what is the balance betwe in, between gas and electricity, for example, the, 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 the interconnection in producing these, uh, the energy to keep the country going? First of all, the, the balance between gas and electricity is quite direct and, and straight uh, due to the fact that some part of the natural gas is being used to generate electricity. And in uh, 2023, this part has been relatively higher than in the previous times of our history due to the obvious reasons of the energy shortage with uh, other generation facilities and it might be quite a substantial part in the future. Uh, in terms of the attacks, uh, NAFTA gas as the part of the energy, NAFTA gas group has been always a target uh, for missile and drone attacks. We've been experiencing them constantly, and uh, last week has not been an exemption. Uh, obviously, we had an attack in different regions of Ukraine, including the west of the country, uh, where we had uh, witnessed uh, our uh, on-ground infrastructure suffering. Uh, but I would like to admit that uh, NAFTA gas will continue its operations and will fulfill all the obligations towards Ukrainian citizens, number one, and international traders that store gas with us. What about impact on tariffs, on prices? Is the average consumer going to face a, a big hike in, in uh, the price of gas because of the war and the impact of Russian strikes? Oh, it's a good question. So let me give a, a brief overview on the pricing. So we have a gas market uh, regulated with so-called PSO, uh, uh, public social obligation, that is being uh, implied to NAFTA gas. Uh, we do supply uh, gas to the households and uh, to municipalities with a capped price, or with a regulated price, uh, that we will keep on doing uh, during the times of, of the war. Uh, it is important uh, to make our clients uh, in a way secure and protected for the future. Uh, there is another part of the market, which is a non-regulated part, where we have the market and this is mainly the industry, the production facilities, and the business. Uh, I think this area works very good, and we have witnessed that the prices went down uh, during uh, this year, and I'm sure they're going to be stable. What I have to admit with your permission, Bogdan, uh, the situation with, with regulated prices for households obviously does not motivate energy efficiency and uh, we have another outcome of, of it and obviously the the international allies are expecting Ukraine to reform this area of economy by liberalizing energy prices and introducing energy market and I'm sure it is we are very close to uh, introducing the energy market of course the war 
will have a certain impact on that. Uh, but obviously, I uh, wholeheartedly support the energy market, which will motivate energy efficiency and will reduce uh, energy consumption in this country. Let's return to that in a second. But before that, I mean, you've, I, I notice uh, that you've also managed to increase NAFTA gas's contribution to, uh, to the Treasury, to the, uh, to the budget, right. state budget. How are you managing to do that in wartime? Uh, I think it's quite clear. We are increasing production levels, uh, meaning we are paying more rent, we are paying more taxes, we are paying more uh, VAT. Uh, it's clear. Uh, from another case, uh, we have witnessed that Ukraine has demonstrated uh, the GDP growth uh, over the course of 2023, and I think NAFTA gas has played a significant role in that. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the level of interest uh, of foreign investors, right? You, obviously, there are those that have been around for a long time. The impact of the war, the last two years, uh, how is this affecting interest from outside the country in investing in the future of Ukraine and it's the rebuilding of this country in your sphere? Right. We, we always knew that Ukraine is an equity shortage market even before the full-scale invasion. So Ukraine needed more equity uh, from international economies that we could have it in, in practice. Uh, the war has limited it, obviously, and limited it seriously. We are not uh, witnessing right now a significant appetite of international investors for the time being. Meanwhile, uh, I would call it a delayed demand, and once the war is over, we are absolutely confident that we will have international equity partners and investors in the area of energy uh, production development of Ukraine. Okay, there was a very important uh, development recently. In February, the uh, corporate governance bill was passed, and I know that Naftogaz welcomed it. Tell us, what does this mean in practical terms for uh, governance in uh, big organizations in, in Ukraine, but for Naftogaz in particular? Why were you so pleased that finally, after many years, this bill was passed? Ukraine is in desperate need for reforms, and corporate governance reform is one of the, list, uh, one of the reform in the list that we should go through. It is so vital for the country and for the transparency of state-owned enterprise. Nafta gas is so-called a bellwether of corporate governance reform, and I'm standing firm to uh, actually, and committed uh, to realizing this reform as much as possible. Uh, we have, have selected the supervisory board uh, last year, and I think it's, it's a great and professional institution that helps the company to be uh, transparent, professional, and uh, strategically uh, confident. Uh, I think this example can be used for other state-owned enterprise, uh, enterprise, and we, we see uh, that the new bill that was adopted by the parliament will support it. Now it is obligatory for the SOE to have the corporate governance, to have the supervisory board, to have the respected respectful committees within the supervisory board and actually uh, run the company uh, using the OCD standards of uh, the corporate governance. Given the size of Naftogaz and your clout within the country, do you see yourselves as a model in this respect, as, as uh, a trendsetter or a standard setter for other uh, companies? I would love to be. Uh, and I think uh, as a result of 2023, NAFTA Gas Group has proven its commitment to corporate governance reform and the role of a prototype uh, for some other state-owned enterprise. Okay, uh, we know that uh, in the past, not so long ago, NAFTA Gas won a very major victory uh, uh, in the international courts in The Hague uh, against Russia. Are there uh, new lawsuits uh, pending uh, uh, as regards Russia's seizure of uh, naft uh, uh, and Ukrainian property in Crimea and elsewhere? Yes, you're right. Crimean case is so important for us. And the victory in Hague uh, last year 
gives uh, a quite a decent prototypes for prototype for other companies to follow our example. Uh, our award is five billion dollars, and we do not expect Russia to pay it voluntarily, and we do everything possible to seize sovereign assets in favor of nafta gas. Meanwhile, we have another case in process, which is case against Gazprom for not fulfilling its obligations within the transit agreement. And this will be another story that we will actively deploy. Okay, looking ahead, one day this war will end. We hope we're confident in victory for Ukraine. What are your uh, longer term plans for integration into the EU, into the European network, energy network? Uh, how far is that advanced? Is it still at the planning stage or are there already some practical uh, examples of this cooperation? Yeah, absolutely. I think NAFTA gas in the process of evolution from a post-Soviet oil and gas classical institution uh, run by the government into a modern energy cooperation with the corporate governance and transparency and appropriate strategy of development within the alternative ways of energy generation. I'm sure and I'm confident that Ukraine can play a role of energy hub for the future European Union, which Ukraine will be a part of. We have, as we have already understood, more than enough of natural gas. We have the biggest storage uh, in Europe uh, of, uh, of natural gas that can be used for, for the other countries. We have oil production, we have oil refineries, we have generation of electricity, we have interconnection between Ukraine and EU, and I'm sure uh, this uh, state uh, is the great place to develop alternative energy projects, and we are quite actively working now on biomethane projects and programs, and other alternative and green uh, transition uh, projects and programs that will be developed even during the course of this war. Well, as we come to the end of this interview, it's very uh, reassuring to hear such confidence and uh, the, a positive outlook uh, as regards the future and Ukraine's potential, um, because you, you hear a lot of gloom and doom, and perhaps a lot of our uh, listeners and viewers uh, also are getting a little bit tired of Ukraine's, uh, the, the bitter side of, of this reality. So thank you for giving us this corrective. Any final thoughts, any final messages that you would like to share with, with our viewers in the outside world? Uh, thank you for your interest in uh, Ukrainian energy, uh, NAFTA gas group, and overall the perspective of the development of the industry. I would like to state uh, that uh, Ukraine will, sta will stand firm uh, towards resilience against uh, Russian aggression. I think Ukraine will become a stronger state. Uh, I'm definitely committed that this time is, uh, if not appropriate, uh, but can be used for uh, realizing a reform agenda uh, for this country. We should use this opportunity. And uh, for sure, Ukraine will uh, come out of this very, very difficult times of its life as a stronger, reformed, and more decent state. Thank you very much, uh, Oleksiy Chernyshov, the CEO of Naftogaz. Uh, dear viewers, uh, Bohdan Nahailo, the chief editor of Kiev Post. I'm glad that we've given you an opportunity to listen to one of the country's top officials. Not only the president is young and dynamic and optimistic, but there are many others uh, working hard for Ukraine's future, and I'm glad that Kiev Post had an opportunity to speak with the CEO of Naftogaz, Alexei Chernyshov. Once again, thank you. Thank you so much, Bogdan.